Hello, this is Andrew with Missing Remote. Today we are going to talk through how to set up an Nginx reverse proxy so that you can host multiple machines, virtual machines, Raspberry Pis, appliances, whatever, using your single public IP. And the way this is going to work is uh, public traffic comes in like this. You're going to set up port forwarding rules. We're not going to talk about how to do that because it's going to be specific to whatever uh, firewall router thing that you're using in your home. This public traffic comes through the reverse proxy and then based on the path it will choose which internal machine is going to proxy the traffic back to. It's a relatively straightforward thing to do once you know how to do it uh, but we're going to walk through how to do it for a single site and then you should be able to, should be pretty easy to extrapolate out from there how you would uh, enable this for multiple sites. I'm using Ubuntu 22.4 LTS we're going to start pretty much from the beginning. I'm not going to walk through how to install Ubuntu, and I'm not going to walk through how to set a static IP address for this box. You probably want to do that, but it's not totally essential if you're using some kind of like static DHCP thing. Uh, some things to note. First off, this is the IP address of this machine, 192.168.13.6, and we're going to proxy in to this machine, which I've, I've set up at 192.168.13.72. It is running Apache, and the reason why it's running Apache, just so it's very obvious that we're going to a different location, a different site. So let's start off, since this is going to be public facing, we want to make sure that it is fairly secure. We are going to set up key-based authentication for SSH. The first step here is to make a, dir make a directory for those SSH keys. And then we are going to make a file for our key to go. I've already generated my keys, so I'm not going to walk through how to do that. It's fairly easy. I use PuTTY because I use Windows for things that I'm not using a server for. So you can use the PuTTY key generator to do that. Uh, you want to paste the public key into this file, and then you want to save it. Once it's saved, you have to make sure that uh, the permissions for the folder and everything are set properly, so we're just going to do that. Now that we have our key entered, we want to configure SSH so that we can only connect using the key. So we're going to turn off password-based authentication. We're going to figure out the file that we need to change to do that, and it is this file right here. So we want a sudo nano. We're going to change this to no, and then we're also going to copy another parameter in here that should make it po make it impossible to log in remotely using the root account. So we're going to go ahead and save that and then we are going to bounce SSH. So we have two things that we need to test now. One, that we can authenticate using the certificate. So let's go ahead and do that first. Generally what you want to do is test all of this stuff before you log out of this terminal because you could end up locking yourself out. So we're going to do that. See, it's prompting now for our key. Go ahead and go ahead and paste in my pass key, and we can see we can authenticate now. I'm going to exit, and now we need to verify that we can't authenticate with a password. So we're going to log in as myself, and we can see here that it won't let me do that because I didn't provide the uh, private key as part of the authentication mechanism. So we're all good to go there from securing SSH on this machine. Next step is to, to check to see if um, UFW, which is a firewall app that I like to use, is installed. It is, so we're going to move on to the next step, which is to see if Ingenix is installed. It should not be. Yep, so let's install Ingenix. This is going to take a while. So we, now that Nginx is installed, we should configure UFW so that it disables all the traffic that we don't want to see. So our first step is to allow outgoing traffic, deny incoming traffic, and then allow SSH. And now we have a choice to make. Personally, I prefer to explicitly allow certain kinds of traffic, but you can enable Nginx uh, completely either totally with this command or just HTTP or just HTTPS. But I'm going to do this differently just because 
I like to do it that way. So I'm going to enable, I'm going to allow HTTP and HTTPS traffic here explicitly. They should be functionally equivalent. You can see here that it's added IP4 and IP6 rules. Now we can check the status and we can see this inactive. Let's go ahead and enable it. Yes. And let's check the status again. And we can see that we're allowing SSH and HTTP and HTTPS on both IPv4 and IPv6 protocols. Let's turn our attention to Nginx now. Let's uh, check the status. It should be off right now. Oh, it's on. That's cool. <laughs> Didn't expect that. Well, let's quickly hit this uh, URL that we have set up for this site. You can see that we're getting Nginx. Notice that I have the site here. This is my FQDN up there and that is returning Nginx there. I think I mentioned that I set up uh, an Apache site on a different server just so we can see that there's a, a difference when we get this all working. The first step we want to do is we want to break Nginx. And I know that sounds kind of weird, but hear me out. We don't want somebody to get to this, to our default Nginx installation and be able to like do stuff on the server. We just want this to be a reverse proxy. So we're going to go down here and in this space here, just right below server name, we are going to do that. And what this does, let's check our configuration. Good. And what that does is it basically disables that listener so that it, we break Nginx. Now we'll go back here and we'll reload the page. Now we can see that Nginx is not responding, so we've effectively broken it, which is perfect. I should point out that there are other ways to, to do this. This is the way that I do it. I like to have uh, FQD on handlers or host handlers per host name, J just in case I'm gonna do things differently with different FQDNs on the server. Uh, you could do all of this inside the default configuration file. I just don't like to do it that way. The next step here is to create a configuration file for uh, my site. And the way that you do that is using the name or using the fqdn.conf. So in my case, rp.missingremote.com.conf, or configuration. I'm going to open that up and I'm going to paste in the configuration that I am using. So let's start at the top here. This defines a server. Our fqdn or server name is rp.missingremote.com. That lets it listen for that. We're going to listen on port 80 and for IPv4, and we're also going to listen on for port 80 on IPv6. I'm going to create a variable for the remote server. If you have multiple remote servers, you would just create like a remote server 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever. So we can use that later on. Our location, our, def our root location, we want to disable that, just like we did on the default site so that it breaks Nginx as a web server. And then we go create a location which defines the path that we're gonna listen on to proxy back to this other server. In this case, the location is site. We're gonna turn on this rewrite in a bit. Uh, just I wanna show you broken first. We are gonna pass the authentication header just in case it's, it's there. And it, what this does is whatever the scheme is, so HTTP or HTTPS, it reflects that back to your remote server. This is not how I generally do things. I generally do it this way, where I put the certificate on the Nginx box and then everything inside of that runs straight up HTTP because it's just a lot less complicated to do that. If you want to do it that way, then you would flip this line for that line. And then we want to pass all of the proxy parameters back to the other server so it knows that we are reverse proxying. Let's go ahead and save this. That doesn't turn it on. That just makes it available. To actually turn it on, we need to do two things. One, we need to create a symbolic link because we create the, the configuration file and sites available. To enable it, we have to turn on, either copy that file or create a symbolic link in the sites enabled. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And now we need to bounce Nginx. Of course, before we do that, it's a good idea to just check that we haven't made anything 
haven't broken anything irreparably and go ahead and bounce that. So now when we reload this page, we can see that we are getting Apache back instead of Nginx. Now, obviously it's not working quite right because we should be seeing this page and not this. The reason why that's happening is because this URL or this, this part of the URL is getting passed back to our Apache server. We're not cutting this off and looking at the root or whatever that we want to uh, proxy back to. So we need to go back to our configuration file and we need to turn on this rewriting rule so that it matches site from the base URL and then inside of this parentheses section here, which is anything that's not site, that gets stuck into this dollar sign. This is a regular expression. It's just kind of how regular expressions work. And it's going to take this part off and just make it the bit that's inside here and copy that back to the remote server. So let's go ahead and save that and restart Nginx. And now we get our Apache site. So that was pretty easy, right? You can effectively do that with as many different servers as you want to. You would just add other locations with, you know, site one, site two, site three, or whatever to make it work. Uh, obviously, if you have servers that have um, applications on them, you would have to, that don't match this site thing, you'd have to put that into the section before the dollar sign one, or you could just make it match it and then not do the rewriting. That's another way to make that work. You might have noticed that we're not using HTTPS. That's not awesome. So let's go ahead and install CertBot. In older versions of Ubuntu, you have to add a repository for this. Uh, this version of, Linux, of Ubuntu, it's in the default sources. All right, so CertBot is installed. I'm gonna clear that up. We now need to install the CertBot plugin for Nginx. All right, so the plugin is installed and let's go ahead and generate our certificate. That was easy. If we go and try to load our site, we see that uh, it doesn't work. And the reason why it doesn't work is because we need to flip these again back the way that I prefer to do it so that it will proxy back using HTTP. So go ahead and exit out of here, save that, and bounce Nginx. And we can see now that we've got our Apache site. We're running TLS, uh, connection is secure. We have a certificate from Let's Encrypt and we're all good to go. I hope that wasn't too complicated. I hope I didn't rush through that too quickly. I'll put all these commands and things on the post that goes on the Missing Route website. Link to that from the description on YouTube so that you can get all these things and just copy and paste. And hopefully it works just as smoothly for you as it did for me. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you found that useful. Cheers.